Smart homes are awesome, until the little box or device running everything starts slowing you down. Lights lag, automations break, and suddenly you're troubleshooting instead of enjoying your setup. Let's fix that. Today we're going to take a look at Home Assistant running on the Protectly Vault, the same rock-solid hardware trusted for secure networks around the world. And here's something you won't find on most hobby boards. Core Boot. Protectly offers its own open source firmware that's hardened for security and transparency. That means when you're connecting things like locks, garage doors, or cameras, you know it's all running on a trusted foundation. The vault is small, quiet, and built to run 24-7. Once you set it up, you can stick it on a shelf or in your network rack and forget about it, since it's designed for dependability, even in demanding environments. And if you ever need help with the hardware, Protectly's US-based sales and support teams are just an email or phone call away. They can help you pick the right model, guide you in the right direction, and make sure your vault is running exactly how you want. A lot of people start with a Raspberry Pi. It's great for testing the waters, but when your setup grows, more lights, cameras, sensors, the Pi can start running out of steam. Automations get laggy, storage feels tight, and if you try to push it further, running virtual machines within a hypervisor like Proxmox isn't even realistic. A Pi just doesn't have the horsepower or stability for that kind of workload. That's where the vault shines. Running Home Assistant in a virtual machine or VM on the vault gives you the flexibility and room to experiment. You can isolate Home Assistant from other devices, snapshot and back it up easily, and if you ever need to start fresh, restoring from a saved image takes just minutes, not hours of reinstalling and reconfiguring. You can even run it alongside other tools like Pi-hole, Plex, or additional virtual machines. It's the best of both worlds, a secure, dedicated environment for Home Assistant without having to dedicate the entire device to a single service or project. That's not to mention the potential security threats introduced by having your IoT devices on the same network as the computer you handle banking or other sensitive information on. If you want to try it yourself, here's how you would install Home Assistant OS as a virtual machine in Proxmox. The reason we recommend installing HAOS inside Proxmox specifically is because Proxmox itself is open source, relatively easy to use, and it allows users to run and manage both virtual machines and Linux containers from a single web-based interface, which again allows you to isolate Home Assistant from the rest of your network for security purposes. Keep in mind we're using Proxmox version 8.2.2 for this example, so if you're using a different version, these steps may look somewhat different. We're also installing Proxmox on a VP6670 in this example, and while you can technically install a hypervisor like Proxmox on most of our vaults, we highly recommend using one of our 6-port models like the VP6600 series for a smoother experience, as they generally have better CPUs, support for more memory, and other benefits that will allow you to scale up as needed. First, obtain the VM image by navigating to the installation page on the Home Assistant website, which we'll leave a link to in the video description. Simply right-click the KVM slash Proxmox link and copy the link. Next, open up your Proxmox install. If you need help setting up Proxmox, we have another video on our YouTube channel which explains how to do this, which we'll leave a link to in the video description. In that video, we install version 8.2.2 of Proxmox, but if you're installing the latest version at the time of watching, which we recommend for the most up-to-date security, the steps will likely be relatively similar. In your Proxmox console, use wget to download the file by typing wget and then paste in the address copied from Home Assistant's website. Next, you're going to need to uncompress the file since it comes as a compressed QCOW2 file. Type unxz. This is the command used to uncompress the file followed by the file name, likely something like haos underscore ova dash 16.2.qcow2.xz. 16.2 being the version number at the time of recording, though it's very possible there will be a newer version by the time you're watching this. You can get this file name by looking at the end of the address that you copied and pasted from the Home Assistant website, it's basically everything after the last forward slash in the address. 
Next, we're going to create the VM. After clicking Create VM, under General, select your VM name and ID. We're going to go with HAOS and 100, respectively. HAOS being short for Home Assistant Operating System. Just a clear label that tells me what's going to be on this VM. And 100 because it's what Proxmox's default numbering system starts with. This is my first VM on the device. And while you can manually change the VM ID, it's generally best to stick to the automatic numbering system as it simplifies management and avoids potential conflicts. For your OS, select Do Not Use Any Media. For your system, change Machine to Q35. This will improve compatibility with modern firmware and devices, such as NVMe drives, USB 3 controllers, and other PCIe-based hardware. Change BIOS to OVMF, UEFI. OVMF stands for Open Virtual Machine Firmware, and UEFI is the Unified Extensible Firmware Interface firmware that allows for virtual machines to boot using the modern replacement for traditional BIOS or basic input-output system that the computer uses. Home Assistant OS is only compatible with UEFI. Select the EFI or Extensible Firmware Interface Storage, typically local LVM. You can find this by looking at the Server View column on the left side of the interface and be sure to uncheck pre-enroll keys. This will disable Secure Boot, which Home Assistant does not support. For disks, delete the SCSI drive and any other disks, as we are going to be adding that back in in a bit. For the CPU, set it to a minimum of two cores, the minimum recommended for Home Assistant. For memory, set it to a minimum of 4096 megabytes or 4 gigabytes. Again, the minimum recommended for Home Assistant. For your network, leave this as the default unless you have special requirements, such as VLANs. Confirm and finish, but don't start the VM yet. Next, we're going to add the image to the VM. In your nodes console, use the following command to import the image from the host to the VM. QM import disk, followed by the VM ID, which is 100 in this case, followed by the file name, which in this case is haos underscore ova 162qcow 2 followed by your EFI location, which is likely going to be local-lvm. When this is done, select your Home Assistant VM, Go to the Hardware tab, select the unused disk, and click the Edit button. Check the Discard box if you're using an SSD, which you more than likely are. Then click Add. Select the Options tab. Select Boot Order and hit Edit. Then check the newly created drive which will likely be SCSI0, and uncheck everything else. This ensures that the VM will be booting the correct drive. And that's pretty much it. Now you can start the VM, check the console of the VM, and if it booted up correctly, you should be greeted with the link to access the web GUI, or graphical user interface. And lastly, in a web browser on the same network as your VM, you can navigate to the link of the web GUI, which will likely be homeassistant.local colon 8123. You can verify this in the console for Home Assistant within Proxmox. If everything's working correctly, you should see the Home Assistant web GUI. If you're interested in more details on what to do next, let us know in the comments and we can make another video on this. With models like the VP6600 series, you've got plenty of muscle to handle it all. These units aren't fanless like our smaller units, but that active cooling is what lets them take on heavier workloads, like running multiple VMs reliably. This is where things get fun. With Home Assistant on the vault, you can go way beyond lights and sensors. 
For example, if you've got an open EVSE charger, you can tie your electric vehicle charging directly into your automations. Charging when solar is available, pausing during peak rates, or syncing with the rest of your smart home. That's the kind of setup where extra power under the hood really matters. And beyond the specs, a big reason people choose the Vault is the peace of mind that comes with it. You're not just buying hardware, you're getting real support from a company that stands behind it. Every unit is purpose-built to last, covered by our standard two-year warranty with options for extended warranties, and backed by ongoing firmware support. If you care about reliability and privacy, that combination is hard to beat. Many people choose the Vault as the backbone of their network, a reliable firewall or router they can count on every day. But the exciting part is knowing you can run Home Assistant alongside that, turning it into the real brain of your smart home. If you want to try this out yourself, check the links in the video description. We've added setup guides and Vault options, so you can pick the model that fits your smart home budget. With a Vault running Home Assistant, you'll spend less time troubleshooting and more time actually enjoying the smart home you've built.